Vegas. Hello, world. What is up? Welcome to Build. I'm your host, Matt Forte. We are here live at the Build Studio in New York City. Our next guest explores the wild with the sole purpose of sharing it in accessible but authentic ways. He's the founder and producer of Vision Hawk Films, the host of National Geographic's Wild America, the co-founder of Montana Grizzly Encounter, and the guardian of Brutus, a grizzly bear he raised from infancy. Now, starting tonight, you'll be able to catch his brand new show, Monster Encounters, at 10 p.m. on the Travel Channel. And with Halloween a mere hours away, the timing couldn't be better. Uh, I'm not even going to tell you what happens in the first episode, uh, but you're going to see. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise. The great Casey Anderson's in the building. How we feel about that, huh? We excited? <laughs> Casey's right here, huh? All right. Uh, we're going to kick things off in just a second, but first, I believe we have a peek at tonight's premiere, so uh, brace yourselves. Let's go ahead and run that clip. I'm in southern Mexico's state of Chiapas, investigating an escalation in reports of bats feeding on humans. And tonight, it seems that I'm what's for dinner. bat saliva contains a protein called, no joke, Draculin, which keeps blood flowing while numbing the wound. So I just sacrificed my leg in the name of science, and it hurt. Whose idea was this anyway? It's time for this experiment to end. He's hanging on. One, two, three. Okay, now I don't want it to go there. My experiment was a full, if terrifying, success. I mean, they're gonna live forever, or I'm gonna die tomorrow. No. My goodness, ladies and gentlemen, make some noise. Casey Anderson's right here, man. Did you, did you see that? <laughs> yeah, I don't try that at home. No, I can't say that I will. Uh, Casey, I usually, I'm inclined to say congratulations when I see somebody <laughs> on a show. After that particular uh, little bit of business there, I'm not sure how to feel, but you know what? Congrats, man. It's, it's a show, it's an awesome show. And I'm super excited you're here. How are you doing, man? I'm doing good. I'm doing, you know, after the bite, I didn't get rabies. I'm, you know, I'm starting to not like sunlight a little bit. It's kind of strange. <laughs> it's starting to yeah, pop in your collar yeah. for no yeah. reason, walking around like this all the time? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's perfect. Um, how, about how long ago was that? When, when, when did you Ah, uh, jeez. Six months ago, maybe? Six months. So you're yeah. good then, yeah. You're yeah, right I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. And bats can carry many diseases. You know, it's one of those risks that we do take going to all these locations. Yeah. And, you know, it's not just the animals. It can be... The weather, how to get, how we're getting there, disease. Totally. Uh, I've been getting bit by a bat. You know, they usually don't have diseases. Um, they usually don't have rabies. Uh, and you know, you saw still it. Rolling, I didn't think it was going to happen. Still I really rolling did. the dice, though, right? Still a little bit of rolling yeah, the dice, little, but it's a risk bit. worth taking. You know, there was a, that was something I went into thinking it wasn't going to happen, but I had to prove it. If it, you know, are yeah, these yeah, yeah. bats biting people? And I proved it. Yeah. Right? Like the first time ever filmed ever. But then the next step is, why are they Why are they biting people? And that's what the important message of this show is. Hang on a second, back up. That's the first time ever caught on film, uh, yep. a bat, uh, vampire bat biting a person like that? Yep, it is, yeah. How? Yeah. You guys win some kind of award or something? Oh, well, we should, I think. <laughs> but yeah, you, you know, yeah, I mean, I don't, most people just don't go try to make that happen. That's pretty wild. Well, okay, fair enough. Ever tried, yeah. <laughs> That's why it's the first time, because yeah. nobody's tried to go out and get uh, intentionally bit by a bat. Uh, how, how often do you find yourself in those shoes that you're capturing something for the very first time? Quite a bit. Yeah. You know, that's what I've been doing in my entire life is tracking animals, elusive animals, going to the corners of the earth. Totally. And, and, and over time, it's like, when you find these things, it sometimes is the very first time anybody's ever seen them. It's crazy. Or understanding them. That's kind of the source of the problem that Monster Encounters is trying to cure because, you know, a monster is something that you're afraid of. Yeah. Why protect something that you're afraid of? But mostly it's the fear of the unknown. Yeah. I mean, there's not people going out looking for these animals and getting a, even a chance to understand them. How, so that's what we're doing here. How, how long have you been in, in, uh, as a wildlife expert at this point? It's been a while. It's been yeah, a couple... yeah, I mean, I've done nothing else my entire life. That's it. But professionally, that's... 20, 25 years. 20, 25 years, man. Yeah. And, uh, and you devoted to, to kind of going out and shining a light on these, uh, these sort of misunderstood creatures, as it were. I wrote down uh, some of the other episode titles because... Uh, all right, Bloodthirsty Bats, we saw that. Uh, Man-Eating Tigers, that's another one. Killer Crocs, okay. Uh, mauling Marsupials, 
why are you doing this again? <laughs> why, what possesses you to, to confront uh, 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 monsters, as it were? Well, you know, there's an article that came out today that we have lost 60% of our wildlife since Jeez. 1970. Uh, as, a, as a whole? Yeah, in the world. My God. And it's a matter of time since they all go away. And a lot of it has to do with what we believe and understand, how we perceive animals. Yeah. If we are afraid of them, if we don't understand them, if they are less valuable than the things that we need at 7.7 .7 billion people on this planet, they're going to go away. Yeah. The animals go away. The wild places go away. Guess what's next? Us. Us. Yeah. So why do we do this? Because someone's got to. It's a responsibility. Yeah. It's, it's, it's curing the myths. It's showing the truth. You know, yeah, there's some scary animals out there. People die sometimes. But if you really dig into it, it's usually because we've taken all their resources away, they're in desperation survival mode, yeah. and they're doing whatever it takes to, to live. And if we can just make those connections, and people understand, if people understand, they'll do the right thing. Yeah. But they don't, no one's giving them the story. No one's giving them the whole story. You know, you, you said you went out there uh, to Mexico you, not knowing that you were going to get bit, uh, you know, hoping that you could capture it on film, sure, in the back of your mind, but not knowing it was going to happen. How often do you find yourself, especially over the course of making this particular show, uh, let's say caught by surprise? You go in with a certain expectation, a million to one shot, and sure enough, you guys end up getting it on film. Because that feels like you're, you're taking a lot of risks, not just safety-wise, but like you don't know if you're going to get what you're going to film when you head out there. Every time. Yeah. Every, Every time. time you go out. And that's the nature of the I beast. I mean, just as soon as you think you've got the wild figured out and it's all predictable, you're, you're behind the ball. I mean, it's bad. Yeah. Because it's, you can never do that. You can't become complacent. And we know so little. You know, as a wildlife expert, I hate that word. Yeah. I mean, I know Sorry. so little. So little. And part of be, being an expert is knowing that there's so much more to learn. And going out there and learning and sharing it with the world, to have this series on tonight, yeah. to go and test this theory and to go to these places where no one goes and to see things, yeah, we get, it's awesome to connect someone right here in New York. They can yeah. go to the Amazon and hang out with, and see what the true essence of a anaconda is. It, it, it is yeah. pretty amazing. It's, it's an incredible show in that regard that it does. It does that job very well of, of bringing uh, something so far away right into your, into your living room, making it very intimate and, and making you understand uh, where these places are, what these animals are, uh, and, and what these monsters are like. How did you decide where to go, uh, which myths to look into, which, which legends to look into, and so on and so forth? But, uh, you know, it's the one, you know, a lot of the things you hear about these monsters, these legends, are stories. Um, and you believe half of them. You kind of take the facts. And there's some of them with the biggest question marks. Like, why is this happening? Is this really happening? Yeah. Uh, and I, those are the ones that really were, were compelling to me. You know, why are tigers eating people yeah. like they never have before? Uh, you know, tigers don't want to eat people. So you go, you know, and they're going to be extinct if people are afraid of them. So let's go there and try to find an answer. And then beyond that, let's try to find a solution. But ultimately, once the solution is found, everybody here has to back that solution. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that it's, those, it's those animals that we need that are important to us, um, animals that are not monsters that need to be proven that, uh, that were the most compelling to me. Yeah. And then there were some that, I guess, in the essence of discovery. Yeah. Legends almost in the Bigfoot-y way, where you know, we do still find big animals out there for the first time. Even now, there's still places that they've hidden away. Yeah. Uh, and some of them, some of these things you hear, like, there might be a chance. <laughs> there might be a chance. Well, I love that. To see if there's something new out there. And if, if that happens, then it's just like a, I think it gives everybody hope. Yeah. You know, there's still something there. You tapped into a similar thing a moment ago of like knowing to, to, be, to be an expert, you have to be able to admit that there's so much you still don't know. And I think that's true uh, just in general. Blank is there's so much we don't know about our oceans, about, about our wildlife, as much as we do know. Uh, so, like, when it comes to stuff like, like Bigfoot or, or, or Chupacabra or, or any of the cryptozoological, like, kind of things, uh, the things that we've established are myths. Uh, sometimes those myths exist because there are weird versions of something that somebody has seen somewhere down the road. Have you ever found yourself in the dead of the night? You're sitting there. You're in the middle of a shoot. Cameras are off. Just you and the animals. Do you ever think, what the hell's out there, man? Is it, do you hear something? Do you, do you doubt reality for a moment that maybe there's a Bigfoot coming through the trees or maybe uh, there's some kind of thing you've never seen before out there? I, I, there's definitely some things out there I've never seen before. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, you know, Bigfoot. Uh, do I think there's Bigfoot out there? I say there's 99.9, .9, right? But there's safe, still a chance, right? Safe bet, probably not. I haven't <laughs> gone and tracked. I haven't gone and looked. Um, but, you know, there's things like the giant squid. Yeah. It was very crypto at one point. There's an animal called the okapi. That's a kind of a big antelope, kind of hybrid between, or looking like a zebra and a giraffe. Mix. Right, right, right. That was as crypto as Bigfoot 
only a few decades ago. And they hear these stories from the locals that there's this crazy animal, and they're like, whatever. Guess what? There it is. Um, so the idea of that, and yeah, I hear things. I see tracks. I'm like, I don't know that. Yeah. I don't know that sound. I love it. That's what keeps me that, going out that, there. Okay. That is the drive, because if we, you know, again, it's like, we know we're messing up the planet. We know these guys are going away at an epic rate. And it's like, we need to, you know, stop, change our life, yeah. change what we're doing in order to let these guys survive, adapt. We need to do adapt. No. But there's like a, such a doom and gloom to it. It's like, by the time you hit the brakes on the train, the train's going to take a long time to slow down. So why even try it? We're, right, it it's right. done anyway. But then when you have this idea that there are places still fresh where man hasn't laid eyes, animals that still live on this planet with yeah. us that are still out there, it gives you hope that we do live in a place that can be wild and that it can be uh, healthy, and we haven't ruined it all yet. Yeah. You, you guys, uh, you uh, Vision Hawk Films, I was looking at a thing you posted. You guys just did like an IMAX shoot in one of the last untouched, like one of the last pure places on Earth. Where was, where was that that you guys went? Yeah, the Great Bear Rainforest. One Great of the, Bear Rainforest. It's just, it's like lost in time. It looks like you go back in time, it's like 30,000 years. That's it's wild. A beautiful place uh, on the coast. It's, 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 uh, the mountains meet the sea, and it's just like there's this blurry line where you know you got bears fishing for salmon, and an orca's grabbing you know heron on the side, and it's just all right Crazy. this place. And as a human in that world, you sit there and you're just you're just one of the animals. Yeah. And they have no fear of you, and they just do their thing. And it's it's kind of to be embedded in that and yeah. not uh, you know influence their behavior, just kind of fly on the wall. As a filmmaker, those are the best. You know, yeah. You just sit there. And you're, 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 learning and seeing things no one's ever seen before and then be able to capture it epically in, you know, IMAX size. Yeah, I saw the trailer. I think it was, at, like, I was running at it at four. I was like, what's the max resolution? Good, 4K. Let's watch this thing. Yeah. I love that stuff, man. It looked incredible. Uh, how long do you find you get to spend, like be it, uh, like a place like in Mexico or, or, or where you had gone for the, for the Killer Crocs there? How long are you, you staying in these locations? It just depends. You know, it depends yeah. on, you know, how hard is it to find the animals. Sometimes we don't. You know, that's, we go, there's a chance that you could, is what it is. Yeah. In some, or you find something different. Um, but patience is something you must have, you know. Um, it can go, I'd say, minimum two weeks. Yeah. It's just looking for something. And sometimes some of these projects can go months. Yeah. Yeah, it just depends on what you're looking for. I wrote down a particular quote that I saw in the press notes. Uh, y y this is exactly as verbatim. There is a crocodile who attacks you repeatedly in one of the episodes. Do you ever find yourself caught off guard or maybe, ha, do you ever, so deep yeah. in you go, uh, how am I gonna get out of this one when I've got this crocodile who's attacking me repeatedly? Like how do you handle a situation like that? Yeah, again, it doesn't make me look real smart. Um, no, not about smart, but I like, I like to say brave and the fact that you're here talking to me proves you're smart, you got out of it. Well, uh, I appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, what are you thinking in that moment though? Oh, uh, what the heck am I doing? Okay, fair uh, enough. Yeah, no, there I mean, go. there's definitely those moments, man. You know, it's like, <laughs> hey, we're going to put ourselves in the domain of man-eating crocodiles. Like, literally, the, this bay that we were in, yeah. six people had been killed within the last year in that bay. Oh so the God. crocodile that we're seeing may very well be the one that is killed and eaten somebody recently. So, yeah, let's get in the water, right? <laughs> so you Why do. not? Yeah. So, you know, we come up with a plan because we, there's, there's things we want to prove. There's the, the experiment is based legitimately in trying to figure something out. But we have to, you have to get in the water. So, you know, you go down to the crocodileproofcage.com that does not exist. <laughs> I was gonna say, where do you find that? Yeah, and so you, you gotta improvise, you know, and you're in the middle of nowhere, Africa, trying to, okay, that truck tire looks good, that little stick no. over there, oh, trust me. Seriously? So you're, you know, you got, you're doing things, throwing things together, and, you know, you're excited. You come up with plan A, B, C, D, and you get in the water, and you think, this is going to work. I don't know why. And then all of a sudden, the crocodile comes over, and you go, uh-oh, A, B, C, D. Or what was E? Oh, we don't have an E. What am I doing? And yeah, you know, a crocodile is one of the most amazing animals on the planet. Yeah. You know, there's sheer jaw, jaw pressure. I mean, they're a dinosaur, 68 million year old thing, yeah. you know? And they haven't evolved at all. And there's a reason, because they're perfection. Yeah. And chain link and steel and all that stuff, it's, it doesn't matter, man. Innovation and what we can do here it might fall fall apart. And this crocodile started testing what we thought, you know, all the stats of job pressure and all these things that, you know, if you read that, it would have been engineered perfectly. Yeah. But that's not reality. And, uh, you know, you get in there and you get a crocodile trying to get to you and uh, things are starting to fall apart. There's those moments, man. There are, there are. And it's, uh, 
it's really important to know that you know we go into it very responsibly. We think about yeah. it, like I said, because if we do something wrong, if we end up being something that's going to uh, fertilize the monster idea, then it, it just might as well wipe the slate clean of everything. Defeats the purpose to of the do. show. Yeah, exactly. But at the same time, there's a beautiful uh, essence of the fact that you can't predict, we can't control everything, yeah. and that we are vulnerable and. You know, if you can walk away and have that moment, and I can be a little scared, the expert, yeah, yeah. shaken, peeing my pants, um, that's good. It's humbling. That's good, yeah. It's the humility I think the world needs. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I wanted to ask, speaking of uh, misunderstood creatures, I mentioned him in the, in the top of the show here, your good friend Brutus. How's Brutus doing? How, He's how, good. He, how old is he now? He's 16, 900 pounds. 900 pounds. Yeah. I, got a, I got a photo of you and Brutus I want to bring up in a second. Here we are. Here's the two of you guys. Yeah, in a hot tub drinking beer. That's what we do in Montana. <laughs> That's unbelievable. Um, you know, so <laughs> you got Brutus. You found him as a cub. You guys are best buds. Halloween's right around the corner. The show premieres tonight. Tomorrow's Halloween. Have you ever, have you ever, has Brutus ever had a Halloween costume? You ever dressed him up before? I uh, know. You know, he no? just, he's just a grizzly bear. You know, that's one thing about why this works. Yeah. I don't dress him up. No. I don't make him do anything he doesn't want to. If he wants to get in the hot tub and drink beer. He'll do whatever he wants. Do it. But yeah, that's that's part of the reason why it works. There's a great story I was listening to at one of your TEDx talks that you had done there, uh, and you were, I think you were talking about Brutus, where you had like a moment where you saw tears welling up in the in the Cubs' eyes. Was that Brutus? That was there? Brutus, yeah. Yeah, and then years later you had that connection. Do you, do you find yourself? Do you ever find that connection with other animals when you're out there in the wild? Is that unique to to how you feel with Brutus? Is that something you you've bonded with other creatures out there? I, I think it, it, two things. You know, I've had bonds with different animals. Definitely, yeah. I've had a relationship of some level. But what that did to me was it just showed an individual personality within this bear. Yeah. A bear is not just a bear. So when you know that, because I've had the opportunity to get to know him and other bears, and I know they're all very different as much as anybody in this room. Yeah. When you go out in the wild world and you look at a herd of deer, it's not a herd of deer. It's a bunch of individual deer hanging out. Right. And we know this in dogs. We, you know, we know that we've had dogs over our lifetime. They're all very different personalities but we don't give that same respect to all the other animals in the world. That's one of the greatest gifts that he's taught me. Yeah. And even in the series that premieres tonight, it's like that, that essence of Bruce, the lesson that he taught me, the gift that he gave me, is that when you go out there, it's, whether it's a white shark or a man-eating tiger, this is an individual making a choice. Yeah. Then there are some bad eggs out there, and you've got to know that. Because if a tiger kills somebody, the way the world sees it, a tiger is a man-killer. Tigers are man-killers. Yeah, Let's yeah. get rid of them. But I got that gift from this dude right here. Mm. And it's because I've had this relationship. Well, then to that end, you've never dressed him up, uh, and you know his personality better than anybody. Maybe you could take these back to him. I had a couple ideas I want to throw your way because he is so lovable. Uh, the first one I had, let's go take a look at this, uh, Fozzie Bear. Now, what I'm thinking here is very simple. It's not going to hurt. It's just a hat and a scarf. It's an easy costume. Is he a, is he a, is he a yuckster? Is he a jokester of a bear? Is this I think he'd do it. He could do it? Okay, yeah, yeah, I got yeah. another one. Let's take a look here. First of all, it's a great picture of him. Uh, another idea I had, let's take a look at this one. Yogi Bear. This one's easy. Just a hat, again, a hat and a tie. Very he hates Yogi. He hates Yogi. Yeah, okay, yeah. get rid of Yogi. Yeah. I got one more here. This, first of all, what the hell's going on here? Yeah, I, what, is, <laughs> what is the story behind this photo? I, you know, it's, it's I saw family, friends, yeah. and I tell you, the key to the heart of a bear is one thing. Food. 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 Well, then, okay, maybe this is the last one. Let's throw this up there. I thought this one was just adorable. I'm waiting the poop. Now, this one, it's going to be tougher to get him in and get him out, but I think he might fit his personality a little bit better. He's a big, Definitely bear. very poo-like. Very poo-like. Yeah. Uh, Wonderful. Yeah. Red. Yeah. yeah, it brings yeah. out the color in his eyes. Yeah. I, um, <laughs> all right, we got one more thing. Thank you for indulging uh, no my problem. ridiculous Photoshop work there. You going to put something on me now? No, you want to put something on you? Hey, yeah, try it. I'll see if we can get a, a tie and a hat on you as well. <laughs> Uh, I want to remind everybody, the show's coming out tonight. We've got a really fun thing we're going to do in a second. Uh, we're going to bring some animals out here. But before we do, I want to thank you, uh, not just for the show, but all the work you've been doing, man, the, the awareness you've been raising, and, and, and the, these amazing creatures, bringing them into our home so we can see them and, and not have to be terrified and learn about them. It's tonight on Travel Channel, 10 p.m., 9 central. Uh, you got to check it out. Monster Encounters, fantastic show. All right, now, that being said, me being scared of animals, misunderstood animals, we've got some amazing misunderstood friends here with yeah, us. Yeah, we have some uh, Why don't we bring them on up? You talk me through. Goodness gracious. All right, there we go. Right out of the gate, we're doing this one. All right. So, what do uh, we got here? Of all the monsters on the planet, this is the yeah. one. Look at a oh my God, that is. It's a rose-haired tarantula. Sure is. And there's 43,000 species of spider on the planet. And I say, like, <laughs> more than half the population of humans have some level of arachnophobia. It's just a little bit, yeah. 
Uh, only, gonna... only like six people die a year from spider bites. And of the 43,000, only like 30 can even have the ability to even do anything to kill control. you. Yeah. So it's a What's... bit of a phobia that's kind of based in uh, sensationalism. Like yeah. A couple bad things happen. Now you've got a monster. Yeah. And why have spiders around? Right? Let's just squish them. Let's just get rid of them. I don't want to squish them. Just put them over there. Is all I'm saying. <laughs> he doesn't have to be squished. And it's the way they move around. It's gorgeous, and... though. I'll tell you that. Oh yeah. yeah. I mean, just look at it. That's the thing about them. Just when you get close to them, I'm which doing my best. Yeah. Don't do. You get to see that they're these these perfectly wow. designed little ambush predators that eat insects, things like cockroaches and mosquitoes, things that actually do pass diseases that actually kill people. This guy's our little bodyguard. What are looking what, out for? What us. are the what are the little guys right up front? Those aren't those are experts. Oh, little, those things. What are those? Are I those? just oh gosh, there's a word and uh, Megan's gonna say it. Megan, right. what's the word? Do we know? Uh, here, you know what? Different question. Are those threatening to me specifically? Those little. No. Little, okay, good. It, doesn't matter. This, this, we'll Google this it. This tarantula Rosie here does have some pretty big fangs, and if she had enough venom and she could inject it into you, you would be digested from the inside out and be immobilized. But Got that's it. not gonna happen. Because she's right there. No, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna face this fear and just yeah. She really is out. Jesus. All right, she is absolutely gorgeous. Oh, so pretty. Uh, yeah, I'm good though. I'm gonna I'm gonna tap out. See, but you're get you wow facing right. your fear yeah, right now. Yeah, that's this is what we need. This is this is what it's all about. Yeah. If I'm gonna do this job, I'm gonna do it right, people. I'm gonna get right in there. She's coming forward though, so I'm gonna I'm gonna back up. Is what I'm gonna do. Respect. Uh, and I'm just gonna give Rosie her space. She only jumped ten feet. Only. Got it. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, whatever, whatever you got coming up. That was a joke. All right, let's switch. What's next? Thank you so much for Rosie. She's beautiful. Uh, who is now? This is my speed. I like this here. Who's, what, do you, what do you think this is? Who's this little buddy? That is um, what's well, the word for that? I love her. Taco, taco the uh, armadillo. It's that's an armadillo. Not, that's not the armadillo's name. No. I have an armadillo in my life it's named a, Taco. This is Athena the armadillo. She's that a three-banded armadillo. They're native to southern Brazil, northern Argentina. Wow. Armadillos, again, there's all kinds of misconceptions about armadillos. People see these things like, what do we need them? They dig up the ground. You know, they're ugly. Uh, the the nine-banded armadillo we have here in the States, people think they all have leprosy. If you touch one, you're gonna you know, get leprosy. It just gets out of control. And these little guys, they're so important to the ecosystem. Again, insectivores, if little animals like this weren't cruising around keeping bugs in check, yeah. We'd be, we'd be a bug's oh life, the gosh, earth would be it? taken over. But look at this little guy, look perfectly this. designed, a little yeah. armor shell. You know, you talk about uh, how, how crocs haven't evolved because they're kind of perfect. I get like an armor vibe, obviously, from the back of the armadillo here. That, that's years of evolution right there. That is perfection. Well, you know, they're not fast. No. Can't climb trees. Um, so predator comes along, you gotta have something. And they something. just. Tuck in a ball, she's the only armadillo species. Whoop, three, oh, she's, that will actually literally roll up. Let's we'll see if we can. She's gonna curl up? She's gonna curl she's up? Like, she's being a little bit of a social butterfly. Oh my gosh, look but at that. But that's what they do. They just go into like the little ball mode and you know, a puma can come along and bat her around and she's just patient and then uh, puma moves away. That's And she's incredible. back to digging ants and chowing down. Before we go to our next one, do we have any questions in the room? We have two yeah. questions in the room. Yeah. I got microphones out there. Let's, let's do the first one and then we'll get another animal up here. Hi. Hi. Um, what has been your favorite animal encounter this season? Ooh, that's a tough one. Yeah. Uh, well, it's had kind of a bit of a surprise. Um, it was an elephant. Oh, uh, really? An injured elephant. Oh. And we had a chance in, in the moment. We were there. We had all the resources to do something uh, for, in the moment for this one individual animal. And uh, I had never cried on television ever until this moment. So. Yeah, it was, it, while it wasn't necessarily a monster, um, part of the reason why I was injured was part of the reason why these elephants are turning into monsters, poaching. Mm. Um, and that was what the injury is from. And to be able to, you know, take, you know, basically do something good for animals, uh, and they're actually starting to learn from people that people are bad, so they start hating them. They have actually a yeah. bit of a, it's true hate. So to show them that, you know what, we're not all bad. We're not, we're individuals too. Some of us are good and some of us are bad. And do something good for an animal like that in the moment was, yeah, that's my long answer. It's pretty awesome. Thank you for that. Let's, let's go ahead and swap out. Looks okay. like Athena's getting a little, oh, she's... a little ready to move on to the next gig. All right. <laughs> Athena's got a lot of appearances to make. Okay, we're just so one this stop. 
obviously is a North American porcupine, wow. right? Oh my god. Those quills will only shoot to the exit sign. <laughs> In that direction. So this, again, misconception. Porcupines shoot their quills. Okay. Not true. So everyone on this side of the porcupine is safe. Is yeah, you don't want to be on that end, but you would have to literally come up and touch her quills. Got it. Or she would hit you with her tail. Got it. Same thing. An awesome rodent designed for the trees. Well, I'm great climber. Watch this. Yeah. You come up behind and she didn't like you. She, Boom. What are you doing? <laughs> now these quills, yeah. Something comes up and tries to take a bite, you're gonna have a mouthful of quills. Casey, Can't give run. her the banana, please. Give her the banana. That's all she wants. <laughs> but you know what? You can pet a porcupine. Can't, could we? And you can snuggle a porcupine as long as you do it the right direction. All right, right direction. Because it's all about fear. You know, she only does that if she's a Oh, gee, she right. loves it. Look at that. Yeah. Burrito. He, actually. He. Oh, is that a he? Yeah. That's burrito. But what? I had taco in my head when I was talking about the armadillo. That's my bad. So all right, so this is burrito the, armad uh, the burrito, the, the, the porcupine. And uh, Burrito doesn't appear to be very hungry. Has Wants to explore. Right there. Come on, you come can up Burrito, here. is Burrito gonna jump? Not much of a jumper. Not much Again, of a jumper, not right? much of an like athlete. Feet, that's legs, hey, that's yeah. why this happened right here. Modified hairs, hundreds or tens of thousands of them back here. Yeah. And uh, I heard a stat today I did not know. Oh yeah, I was here. The sharpness of the tip of the quill is 30 times sh more sharp than a surgical scalpel. Really? Yeah. And it, yeah, we, Yikes you literally right. poke yourself with it <laughs> quick and you don't even feel it. So you wouldn't even, so technically it wouldn't even hurt. No, but it would make you, uh, if you had a mouthful of quills, if you were a, a mountain lion or a wolf. Oh my God. You're going the other direction. A mouthful of quills. Anybody remember Homeward Bound? Anybody old enough to remember Homeward Bound? Yeah, okay. Oof, you don't want a mouthful of quills. Chance, right? It was Chance? It was Chance, thank you. Great audience. All right, um, <laughs> Homeward Bound, huge movie when I was a kid. The dogs, the cat, they leave. You know what, well, I'll tell you after. I'm I'll gonna end it. up I'll watch it tonight. You'll watch it tonight, yeah. After this? After this, yes. Of course, of course. there we go. All right, we've got, uh, I don't want to say bye, but we've got one more friend to bring up here, and my goodness. All right, uh, we'll say bye to Burrito. Oh, did Burrito eat one of the bananas? Yeah. He did. <laughs> I missed it, fantastic. All right, who's our last You're buddy right here? Go wild? So, who's this is this? a Bennett's Wallaby. So wallaby. Native to Australia. Natural. Kind of the uh, small cousin of the kangaroo. Okay. And so you saw in the list of episodes, uh, there was a marsupial. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. I believe mauling it said marsupials. mauling marsupials. So one thing interesting about Australia, they've basically have eliminated most of the predators, but now there's these sightings coming out of Australia. There's a big cats killing things, killing sheep. Yeah, yeah. Killing kangaroos and wallabies. Um, oh. Yeah, back to this misidentifying things. If you look at the tail of this wallaby when yeah. she comes around, it looks a lot like a cat tail, right? Let me see this. Looks like a mountain lion's Very much. tail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look you at know, that. When you see them go across the road in the, in the headlights, you often just see that tail. Okay. And then the human imagination. Okay, now there's cats out there. They see some tracks that are kind of weird, or they see something that's been killed by a, a feral dog. Now it's a wild cat running around. And then it just it snowballs and snowballs and snowballs. Now you've got hunting parties looking around for uh, these dangerous animals that are running around the outback of Australia. And oh, all it was was this awesome little critter's tail that you. somebody saw across the road and it's turned into a crazy monster. Now would this little critter want some of that banana? I don't know, yeah? Yeah? Come here, Kaya. Let's see, Kaya, is it Kaya? Kaya, yeah. Kaya is, oh, look at you go. Hey, Kaya, what's up? Isn't it cool how they move around? So cool. Amazing little athletes. Obviously, marsupials are only native to Australia. Oh, that's not true, actually. We have one here in, the nor in North America. Is it opossum. Kaya? No, no, you don't, you don't mean we literally have one. We there. do. All, uh, the American opossums are the only marsupial that we have in North America. Can I ask you a silly question? We were debating this earlier. What technically constitutes a marsupial? Uh, the pouch. No, and no placenta. Nailed it. I said pouch. I, yeah. I said, pouch I and no placenta, yeah. Pouch and no, no placenta. Mm -hmm. I don't know if, given the time, I would have arrived at the second one, but I definitely had pouch. Yeah, you know, they're, they're little guys are born immature, crawl up, and crawl get up in the in pouch there. and develop there. It's like the and second just, womb. That's pretty amazing. Hey, Kaya. Kaya, you want to turn around and say hi to everybody? Kaya's a little shy. Should I? Am I right to be resisting the urge to pet Kaya? That no. seems like, no? Well, I'm slow. getting, maybe? All right, well, I'm going to get on. She's chilled out. She's being social. Yeah, I'll be very gentle. Butterfly. Oh, my God. You are so soft. What do you think? Kaya, what's up? I love just kind of letting... The animals kind of explore the set because it's, you know, this is fun. This is entertaining to them. Yeah. It's really important that 
And like, hey, what's who's all these people? What's all these like? What's this <laughs> smell like? And oh. then, you know, the more you just let them relax, they they know. More of a peel girl. All right, Kai, I get it. We're gonna hook you up. Yeah, that's yours. Take it for the road. That's road banana. That's all yours. All right, I um, oh goodness, I could stand here and do this for the rest of the day, but I do gotta wrap things up. They're giving me the signal. I wanna one. Oh, I think we have we have one more question. Do I have time for that? I'm gonna do one more question, then I'm gonna wrap cool. it up. Go for it, sir. Hey, sorry, hey. one good day in New York this morning. That was awesome. Hopefully, they got the quills out of that couch. They did, yeah. They did? <laughs> nice. So are these animals, like, locally sourced for this purpose, or do they travel with you to every press junkie that you're doing around the country? No, you know, we, they're locally sourced, but we definitely run it through a, a filter. You know, it, interesting enough, my relationship with Brutus has actually ca caused me to be a bit of an anti-captive wildlife guy. But it, getting up close to these animals and seeing them like we all are now, the, the power of that and curing the ignorance about animals is very important. But also, who, where the animals are coming from, it's very important that they are taken care of, the ethics are in place, and because it's not always that way out there. So yeah. we definitely have the responsibility of making sure where we source these animals, usually locally because we want, don't want to stress the animals, and they gotta be animals that are, that are used to doing this. So we gotta have pros that take care of their animals, that have their ethics in the right place, in order for us to associate with it. Cause that's, we're fighting against the, the misconception of animals and we just don't wanna to feed that fire. Yeah. It's probably hard to find a hotel that'll allow you to bring a marsupial or bring a wallaby into your room. Yeah, I'd be surprised it, in New York. That's true. You gotta ask yeah. around. You gotta, <laughs> but you can, you can get what you need. I mean, I've had some crazy animals right in the middle of New York before and in a hotel. What's the craziest animal you ever had in a hotel? Go. Uh, almost full grown mountain lion Get in the Muse off Times Square. Really? Yeah. And, it, you know, Just we, sneak said in? Well, they said they could have cats. <laughs> they didn't specify loopholes. And we brought it in, and uh, the manager's like, ah, oh, that's so cool. Oh, I love and, it. like, they brought, like, filet for the cat every night. It, so, again, that's perfect be. example. That's a great, you know what? It's so funny. Not too long ago, we had uh, some baby cheetahs here, and one of the people that was traveling with them was saying, yeah, they're just going to run around my hotel room later tonight. And I couldn't fathom, but I guess tiny cats, cats. They yeah. like it. That's Run it. Around, cat's yeah. a cat. Cat's a cat. Unbelievable. Uh, all right. Well, first of all, I want to thank Jennifer and Megan, right? Yeah, Jennifer and Megan. Round of applause to our handlers for helping us out. You're wonderful. Thank you. I want to thank you guys for being an amazing audience. Those are great questions and hanging out with us. Uh, round of applause for yourselves. And then, of course, oh, look at you, Kai. You want to host? We're going to put Kai in the chair for the next one. You're going to take over the show. It's your show now, Kai. Uh, I want to remind everybody one last time, Monster Encounters, it premieres tonight on the Travel Channel uh, at 10, 9 Central, every Tuesday. you got to check it out. Ladies and gentlemen, please, uh, one more round of applause and join me in sincerely thanking the great Casey Anderson right here. Thank you, sir. Thank you, man. Oh, man, that was great. So good. Thank you.